Good afternoon. Today I would like to introduce you the first lecture in pharmacology, Introduction to Pharmacology. The plan of the lecture, history of pharmacology, definition and basic concepts of pharmacology, drug names, brand drugs and generics, stages in development and regulation of new drugs, classifications in pharmacology, roots and principles of administration of drugs. Let's start from history of pharmacology. Please take a look at this phrase by William Withering. Poisons in small doses are the best medicines, and useful medicines in too large doses are poisonous. This phrase is very interesting and it explains that a dose is very important for any kind of substance. To call it as a poison or as a useful one. Pharmacology in the present form is a relatively recent branch, which is about 100 years old. Knowledge of drugs and their uses in diseases are as old as history of mankind. Primitive men gather the knowledge of healing and medicines by observing the nature, noticing the animals while ill, and personal experience after consuming plants and herbs as remedies. Ancient civilizations discovered that extracts from plants, animals, and minerals had medicinal effects on the body tissue. These discoveries became the foundation of pharmacology. On this slide, you can see that pharmacology started even before Christ. For example, Pensao, it was the great herbal materia medica written in China. Cajon Papyrus is an oldest Egyptian document containing information about veterinary medicines and uterine diseases of women. Ebers Papyrus, also an Egyptian document containing information about number of diseases and 829 prescriptions where castor oil, opium-like drugs are being used. Hippocrates, the father of medicine. He was the first person who recognized disease as abnormal reaction of body. He introduced use of metallic salts for the treatment of disease. Theophrastus, a great philosopher called father of pharmacognosy. He classified medicinal plants on the base of medicinal characteristics. Dioscorides, a Greek produced one of the first Materia Medica of approximately 500 plants and remedies. Claudius Galen first attempted to consider the theoretical background of pharmacology. Paracelsus, a Swiss scholar and alchemist, often considered the grandfather of pharmacology. He introduces the use of chemicals for treatment of disease. Valerius Cordus, he complied the first pharmacopoeia, where he described techniques for the preparation of drugs. Modern pharmacology. Conversion of old medicines into the modern pharmacology start taking shape following the introduction of animal experimentation and isolation of active ingredients from plants. Francois Megendi, a first pharmacologist, established the foundation of modern pharmacology. He developed experiments to elucidate the physiological processes and action of drugs on the body. Rudolf Buche, German pharmacologist, a key figure in the development of pharmacology, who created the first pharmacological institute. Frederick Ser Turner, German pharmacist assistant, isolated morphine, the first pure drug in 1805. Claude Bernard, considered father of experimental medicine. He identifies the site of action of curare, arrow poisoning. Maybe you saw in some movies that arrows, which are blown out from a very small tube into a person's back or neck, and this person is falling down. This is the idea of curare, which was after that identified as skeletal muscle relaxant. Oswald Schmidberg, father of pharmacology, established pharmacology as an independent discipline. He started teaching pharmacology in University of Strasbourg, France. John Jacob Abel founded the first department of pharmacology in USA in the University of Michigan in 1893. In 1897, he established pharmacology department at John Hopkins University. Abel also co-founded the Journal of Pharmacology and Experimental Therapeutics in 1909. L. Mayer Jones regarded as father of modern veterinary pharmacology. He authored first book of veterinary pharmacology therapeutics in 1954. Scope of pharmacology. It provides the rational basis for the therapeutic use of the drug. Before the establishment of this discipline, 
even though many remedies were used, but doctors were reluctant to apply scientific principles to therapeutics. In 1920s, many synthetic chemicals were first introduced and the modern pharmaceutical companies began to develop. Scientific understanding of drugs enables us to predict the pharmacological effect of a new chemical that will produce a specified therapeutic effect. The scope of pharmacology has expanded greatly over the last decade to incorporate many new approaches such as computer-assisted drug design, genetic screens, protein engineering, and use of novel drug delivery vehicles, including viruses and artificial cells. Our society needs pharmacologists who understand the basis of modern therapeutics for carriers within academic, pharmaceutical, and governmental laboratories to study and develop tomorrow's drugs. Second part of our lecture is definition and basic concepts of pharmacology. So what does it mean pharmacology? Pharmacology comes from Greek pharmakon, which means drug, and logos, teaching. The science that studies the interaction of the chemical substances with live organisms for the treatment and prophylaxis of various diseases and pathological processes. What does it mean drug? Drug is any chemical that affects the processes of a living organism. Please take a look at the phrase of Dr. Sir William Osler. One of the features which is thought to distinguish man from other animals is his desire to take medicine. Sources of drugs. The different sources of drugs are plants, alkaloids, morphine, atropine, quinine, glycosides, digoxin, digitoxin, animals, insulin, heparin, minerals, ferrous sulfate, magnesium sulfate, microorganisms, penicillins, streptomycin, griseofulvin, semi-synthetic, hydromorphone, hydrocodone, synthetic. Most of drugs used today are synthetic ones. For example, aspirin, paracetamol. Drugs are also produced by genetic engineering, DNA recombinant technology, for example, human insulin, human growth hormone, and hepatitis B vaccine. Basic concepts of pharmacology. Pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, pharmacotherapeutics, pharmacognosy, and toxicology. We will stop on each of these parts in more details in future lectures. But until this moment, I would like you to understand that pharmacokinetics is about how the body deals with the drug. Pharmacodynamics is the effect of a drug on the body. Pharmacotherapeutics is a clinical usage of the drug. Pharmacognosy, the study of natural drug sources. And toxicology, the study of side effects of drugs. On this slide, you can see the connection of these five different concepts yes, with pharmacology. Pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, pharmacotherapeutics, toxicology, and pharmacognosy. The next part of our lecture. Drug names, brand drugs, and generics. Pharmaceutical explosion. Nowadays, there are over 350,000 drugs in the world which are used for different diseases. In Ukraine, nearly 14,000 drugs are registered now and allowed for administration as curative agents. The volume of world pharmaceutical market annually, $400-$600 billion. About names of drugs. From all of those drugs which are around, as we told, 350,000 drugs in the world, yes. I would like you to understand the difference between the drug name and the names which are international ones. First is generic name. is given for the drug to be an official name. The official name is the name under which it is listed in one of the official publications. The chemical name is the name by which the chemist knows it. The trademark or brand name is the name given by the drug manufacturer. For example, hydrochlorothiazide. It is official name and we will discuss in our topics the actions, the features of hydrochlorothiazide specifically. And as it drags, it is its brand name. So it means that it is a kind of name which is on the box produced by a specific pharmaceutical company and that specific company called this drug as it drags. So, 
Now in more details. What does it mean brand? Brand. Original drug which is defended by patent and may be produced during patent term only by this pharmaceutical company. So in simple, some kind of pharmaceutical company discovered some compound or the new technology of this compound and they receive patent. Nobody can produce this kind of compound. It is their compound for the coming period of patent. Generic. When term of patent is discontinued, the drug may be produced by different pharmaceutical companies under new product or trade name, but at the basis of original active substance, similar quantity, route of administration, etc. In simple, after the term of patent, other pharmaceutical company can start also to produce this kind of drug. I mean, the name, of course, must be different, but the composition, the compound, which is the main in this drug, after patent, can be started or produced by some kind of other pharmaceutical company. All generics are much more cheaper compared to brands. That is the main reason why they are so popular among the patients. I would like to stop on this phrase and for you to try to imagine. Brand. For example, pharmaceutical company, they are discovering the drug from the early beginning. They will spend 10, 15, maybe years of time, billions of dollars to discover this compound, to go through all stages, preclinical and clinical stages, of proving that this compound is safe and active. And only after that it can be, maybe, released. They will spend a lot of time and a huge amount of money. Those companies which will simply get this patent, they don't need to spend such huge amount of money, yes? They simply can start producing this, this compound. Of course, they will spend much more or less money and the price of these drugs will be cheaper. As an example, in UK, in Germany, in France, in Holland, in Denmark, the part of generics among all drugs is 50 up to 75%. If to compare, in Ukraine, the majority of the drugs are generics. Market volume of generics in Europe is over $10 billion annually. So, and in the bottom you see the question. Are brand and generic drugs the same? Ukraine, as an example. 128 preparations of diclofenac sodium. 60 of paracetamol. What does it mean? It means that... Drug which includes paracetamol is around 60 trade names. 60 trade names which include this active substance as paracetamol. But for each drug, only single international name and different trade names. So once again, it means that paracetamol will be everywhere paracetamol. But in Ukraine, for example, there are around 60 drugs which are called in different ways. For example, you can see in here some monodrugs which contain only paracetamol and combined drugs, drug names to be correct, which contain this paracetamol. Milistan, Aldolor, Dolomol and others. Yes, trade names. But all of these drugs include paracetamol. On the next picture you can see Nadolol, international name. Yes, in pharmacology also we will talk about Nadolol. But the trade name is Corgard. For example, Becotide, Beclomet. These are trade names, but the exact active substance is Beclometazone dipropionate. This is the international name about which we will talk about. The next part of our lecture is stages in development and regulation of new drugs. Please pay attention to this phrase by Lao Tzu, Chinese poet. Those who have knowledge don't predict. Those who predict don't have knowledge. On this slide, I would like you to take a look on the drug development process. As I told before, in total it will take around 10-15 years from the moment when they started the discovery, the screening of this drug and finishing the new drug launch and post-market activity. This period will, will be around 15 years from the moment of discovery, finishing the moment of its release. About these phases and about these stages we will talk in the future slides. This slide explains us biopharmaceutical drug development. Please take a look in here. 
and you will see 10,000 compounds. It is actually the process of the drug which appears in pharmaceutical markets. From 10,000 compounds reaches only one compound, one approved drug by Food and Drug Administration, as an example in USA in this case. So, for example, there were 10,000 compounds and only one reached to its logical end. On this slide you can see the cost estimates per new molecule. Totally, totally, it can be spent, as I told you, more than even billion of dollars. In this case, for example, it is almost one and a half billion dollars, which were totally spent to discover a new molecule. And now ask yourself a question, why brand drugs are so much expensive? Of course, because they spend billions of dollars. And as we had in previous slide, around 15 years, and they were very lucky to be the ones which finished the logic of discovery of new drug and spend such huge amount of money. Of course, they will be expensive. So let's discuss now more in details those stages of discovery of development of new active pharmacological substance. The preclinical stage as one of the first stages. It is divided into drug isolation, semi-synthesis or synthesis. After this goes pharmaceutical development after that, animal pharmacology and animal toxicity. Animal pharmacology, preclinical stage. So each compound, first of all, must be tested on animals to understand its features, its safety, and its activity. It determines screening, the specificity of effect and the mechanism of action of a new drug, the pharmacokinetics of a new drug. And animal toxicity which is divided into, first of all, acute toxicity. It will mean that a single dose within a 24-hour period, which determines median lethal dose, LD50 we also call it. So we give one dose to the animal, and in 24-hour period we watch, we look what is happening with this animal to understand the acute toxicity of that compound. Also, other types which are subacute toxicity, up to one month, chronic toxicity, up to six months, mutagenicity, carcinogenicity, reproductive studies, teratogenicity. So on this slide you can see discovery and preclinical development and important questions which are asked in this process. If to talk about statistics of those animals which were chosen for these researches, we may say that, for example, in Great Britain, 84% of animals which were chosen were rats and mice. Around 11% fish, birds and reptiles, 3% rabbits and ferrets, 1% sheep, cows and pigs, half percent dogs and cats, 0.14% monkeys, which are not over than 12 years. So these animals were and can be chosen for providing preclinical researches. From that percent, 49 were used for development of new drugs and around 20 for fundamental biological and medical researches. As an example, May Apple, Podophyllum peltatum, India, USA. From this kind of plant, first it was discovered podophyllin, after that epipodophyllotoxin, and as a result, the drug which is etopozyte. So, what we discussed before this was about preclinical stages on animals. Now, clinical stages, which is divided into four phases. Of course, children and pregnant women cannot participate in these clinical experiments. So, human pharmacology, phase one. This is the first administration of a drug to humans, and it usually follows the completion of pharmacological and toxicological studies in animals. So, only after successful and safe studies in animals, it can be talked about human pharmacology researches. Phase 1. The research drug is given to 12-15 healthy volunteers, first in single, increasing doses, and then by multiple administration to cover the range of therapeutic use. These studies are conducted to obtain data of safety, the range of dose, and kinetics only. A common rule is to begin with one-fifth or one-tenth of the maximum tolerated dose in the most sensitive animal species. Phase 2. 
This is the first administration of a drug to patient. The investigation of drug is given to 150 to 500 patients. Elimination of drug should be assessed because patients may metabolize it differently than healthy subjects do. In this phase, the efficiency of the investigation of drug can be compared with placebo. And placebo is the dosage form without active substance but with the same flavor, mode and appearance. The placebo effect is a psychogenic effect. Drugs for treatment of asthma, duodenal ulcer, arterial hypertension have a high placebo effect. Clinical trials with placebo are forbidden if the potential drug has antimicrobial, antidiabetic or antineoplastic activity. Phase 3. The research drug is given to 1000 or more patients to provide data permitting statistical evaluations of the drug's efficiency and safety. The studies include double-blind, randomized controlled clinical trials. The efficiency of a new agent must be compared with famous drugs. If there are advantages, the manufacturer can file a drug submission with the regulatory agency for permission to market the new drug. Only if it is successful, yes, if there are some very important advantages of that compound. And of course it is safe. And phase 4, which we also may call post-marketing control, it contains standard of productions, purity, efficiency and safety, packing, labeling, advertising, scheduling of drugs to indicate how to use and prescribe. Post-marketing control also includes control for unwanted effects, drug interactions, new therapeutic effects, example with aspirin. So, for example, the same example of uh, aspirin. It was understood that aspirin is providing antipyretic, analgesic and anti-inflammatory effects. But later on, it was discovered that aspirin in small doses, which are around uh, 100 mg in 24 hours, also provides the only influence on thromboxane A2 synthase. And additional effect of aspirin was discovered, the influence on blood coagulation and adhesion of thrombocytes. The next chapter of our lecture is classifications in pharmacology. So how do we classify pharmacology? First of all, the types of pharmacology. Experimental pharmacology done in the laboratory or experimental animals, such as rodents and non-rodents. And clinical pharmacology on human subjects, normal or diseased. I think this part is clear. On the next slide, you can see the connection of pharmacology with different sciences, starting from psychology, clinical medicine, therapeutics, veterinary medicine, pharmacy, biotechnology, pathology, chemistry, health economics, clinical epidemiology, genomics, and genetics, and subdivision of them into pharmacogenetics, pharmacogenomics, pharmacoepidemiology, pharmacoeconomics, medical chemistry, toxicology, pharmaceuticals, pharmaceutical sciences, veterinary pharmacology, clinical pharmacology, and psychopharmacology. These all are connected with pharmacology, which we will study and pharmacology itself into pharmacokinetics, drug metabolism, biochemical pharmacology, molecular pharmacology, chemotherapy, systems pharmacology, which is also subdivided into neuropharmacology, cardiovascular pharmacology, gastrointestinal pharmacology, immunopharmacology, and respiratory pharmacology. Little about classification of drugs. So how do we generally classify drugs? First of all, in chemical nature, source, target organ site of action, mode of action, therapeutic uses, physiological system, and physical effects. As an example of each of these classifications. Classification based on chemical nature. Chemical nature of drug is discussed by a chemist. Based on chemical nature, we divide drugs into inorganic drugs, for example, metals and their salts, and non-metals. Organic drugs, Alkaloids, glycosides, proteins, esters, amides, alcohol, glycerides. Second, classification based on source. Sources of drugs are discussed by a pharmacologist and pharmacist. As an example, natural source, plants, animals, microorganisms, mineral, synthetic source, sulfonamides, procaine, for example, semi synthetic source, amoxicillin, ampicillin, doxycycline, biosynthetic source. Recombinant human erythropoietin, recombinant bovine somatotropin. This is a classification based on source. 
The next one is classification based on target organ. Classification based on target organs are done by the physicians. As an example, drugs acting on CNS, drugs acting on respiratory system, drugs acting on CVS, drugs acting on GAT, on urinary system, and on reproductive systems. As an example, you can also see in GAPS the examples of drugs. Force classification is based on the mode of action. Classification based on mode of action is done by physicians and pharmacologists. As an example, inhibitors of bacterial cell wall synthesis, penicillin, inhibitor of bacterial protein synthesis, tetracycline, and calcium channel blocker, verapamil or nifedipine, for example. Fifth, classification based on therapeutic use. Antimicrobials, antibacterials, penicillin, streptomycin, quinolones, macrolides, antihypertensive, clonidine, hydralazine, and allopril. Antidiarrheals, loperamide, caulid. Antiemetics, domperidone, meclizine, and metoclopramide. These are the examples of classification on therapeutic use. The sixth one is classification based on physiological system, sympathomimetics, parasympathomimetics, neuromuscular blockers, and classification based on physical effects, emollients, caustics, demulsants. And one more part of our lecture is Roots and Principles of Administration of Drugs. Roots of Administration and Formulation There are some rules, for example, to be effective, a drug must be present in an active form, at the correct site, at the right concentration, for the right duration of time. The formulation of the product for each delivery route is vital, to ensure optimal activity and consistent delivery. Thus, choose the right route of administration and formulation. So, for example, which routes of administrations we can discuss? Oral, parenteral, sublingual, buccal, and inhaled. For example, oral are tablets, capsules, elixirs, syrups, suspensions, granulas, powders, caplets, and drops. Parenteral. The parenteral route of administration, it is the one which is not going through GIT. Intradermal, subcutaneous, intramuscular, intravenous, intratracheal, epidural, spinal, deport. Sublingual, buccal, tablets and sprays. Inhaled, aerosol inhalers, dry powder inhalers, nebulizer solutions, spacers. Other examples, rectal, vaginal, transdermal and topical. Rectal, for example, suppositories, enemas, vaginal, pessaries, creams, vaginal tablets, transdermal, creams, gels, patches, and topical, creams, lotions, gels, nasal sprays, shampoos, pessaries. Now let's describe some main uh, routes of administrations in more details. For example, oral route. Oral route is the most common route through the mouth. What are the advantages? First of all, least expensive and most convenient route for most patients. Safe, doesn't break the skin. For conscience and able to swallow patients. These are the advantages. What are the disadvantages? Inappropriate for patients with nausea and vomiting. Drug may have unpleasant taste. May cause irritation of GAT. Also, drug may discolor teeth. Drug can be aspirated by ill patient, absorption hampered by food, drug may be destroyed, for example, insulin, drug may not be absorbed, for example, streptomycin, and the idea of first pass metabolism. First pass metabolism we will discuss in the next lecture. So these are advantages and disadvantages of oral route. Some drug forms which are used by the oral route of administration has got a specific enteric coating. So, some pills or tablets are coated with substances which resist the acid juice of stomach but permit disintegration in intestinal juices. So, what is the point of them? First of all, to prevent gastric irritation and alteration of drug in stomach, to get desired concentration of the drug in small intestine, to retard the absorption of the drug. This is the point of entry coating. Now, some, for example, pills and tablets. Also about oral route of administration, there are some drug forms which has got sustained release. Uh, as you can see, sustained release, timed release, extended release, prolonged release, these are all synonyms. It is the same. 
So what does it actually mean, sustained release, and what are the features? A sustained release uh, or time release preparations for oral use. Release the active drug over an extended period of time. Particles of drug covered with coatings which dissolve at different time intervals. For example, Ambroxol. Exists Ambroxol, which is the drug for treatment of productive cough. It exists in the drug form of tablets 30 mg. But also exists a prolonged form of Ambroxol, which are capsules 75 mg, which patient should take, for example, only once in a day. And the previous drug form, which is tablets 30 mg, patient should take three times in a day. The similar story is also about acetylcysteine which is also for the treatment of productive cough. As an example, uh, 200 mg powder three times in a day. But there also exists water dissolving tablets, 600 mg, which patient may take only once in a day. Next route of administration is sublingual. Sublingual, it is drug placed under the tongue where it dissolved. What are the advantages? They are the same as oral plus Drug may be administered for local effect, drug rapidly absorbed into bloodstream, more potent than oral, quick effect, no degradation by digestive juices, no first pass metabolism. Disadvantages. If swallowed, drug may be inactive. Drug must remain under the tongue until dissolved and irritation of mucous membranes. These are a few disadvantages, and as you can see, a very big list of advantages, plus those three which were for oral way of administration. Rectal root can be used when drug has bad taste. What are the features? Rich blood supply, no irritation of GIT, and useful in patients who cannot swallow, vomiting, or uncooperative patients. Also, as an information for you, buccal, which is pertaining to the cheeks, and translingual, which is on the tongue. Subcutaneous. Advantage. Onset drug action faster than oral. And disadvantages. Must involve sterile techniques because breaks skin barrier. More expensive than oral. Can administer only small doses. Slower than intramuscular injection. And some drug can irritate tissue and can cause pain. Next one is intramuscular. Injection into the muscle. What are the advantages? Influence from irritating drugs is minimized. Can administer large volume of drug. And drug rapidly absorbed. Disadvantages? Breaks skin barrier and can be anxiety producing. One more is intradermal. Intradermal is the administrating of a drug into the dermal layer of the skin just beneath the epidermis. Usually small amount of liquid is used, for example, 0.1 milliliters. Advantage. Absorption is slow. Disadvantage. Amount of drug administered must be small and breaks skin barrier. Other routes which are intravenous allow injection of drugs and other substances directly into bloodstream through the vein. It is the quickest and the fastest one. And also a very important idea that first pass metabolism is not involved in this way of administration, but we will talk about it on the next lecture in more details. Next one, inhalation, is apply of drugs directly into lungs. And few more uh, topical routes, skin, including transdermal patches, eyes, ears, nose, and lungs. So, and as the last part of our lecture, are some very important terms which I would like you to memorize. First of all, to sum up, pharmacology, it is a science that studies the interaction of the chemical substances with live organisms for the treatment and prophylaxis of various diseases and pathological processes. Pharmacopoeias are the total of all authorized drugs available within the country. Medication is a substance administered for diagnosis cure, treatment, mitigation, or prevention. Prescription. The written direction for the preparation and the administration of the drug. Drug. Any chemical that affects the processes of a living organism. Pharmacokinetics. is about how the body deals with the drug. 
Pharmacodynamics is the effect of a drug on the body. Pharmacotherapeutics is a clinical usage of a drug. Pharmacognosy, the study of natural drug sources. Toxicology, the study of side effects of drugs. Brand name, original drug which is defended by patent and may be produced during patent term only by this pharmaceutical company. Generic name, when term of patent is discontinued, the drug may be produced by different pharmaceutical companies under new product or trade names, but at the basis of original active substance. For example, similar quantity, route of administration, etc. Thank you for your attention.